Welcome to God's Five Minutes with Pastor Ed Wilson. Reach him at God's Five Minutes at gmail.com. Now, here's Ed Wilson with God's Five Minutes. Hello, friends. 2 Kings 13 contains a fascinating little story of a man who died, and while his friends were taking him for burial, they were threatened by a marauding band of Moabites. On seeing the threat, the dead men's friends tumbled him into the nearest open sepulcher, which happened to be where the prophet Elisha's body was. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood up on his feet. This great miracle, though given in two short verses of Scripture, contains so many valuable lessons. For one, it was a definite proof of Elisha's mission and a confirmation of all his prophecies. For it was not some mysterious power in the bare skeleton that caused the miracle. Else would the bones have been divided and sent throughout Israel to be used to resurrect anyone who died. Rather, God chose this means of demonstrating the importance of his divine call to his prophets. Scriptures such as these are the reason why books like Isaiah and Ezekiel are in the holy canon. For God's word through the centuries has been confirmed with signs following. In the same sense, the entire Old Testament is a compelling argument that there is a God, and that he takes interest in the daily events and the lives of humans. If not, how do you explain the Jews whose history for centuries was studded with events of just this sort? Our holy faith in unseen powers and God-given commandments stands on the strongest of foundations. It was also a plain indication of another life after this. Elisha was a man, and he faced the same grim moments of realization that just as with Elijah before him, his mortal life was near its conclusion. No doubt, when the darkness was closing in, he drew comfort from the vivid memory of the fiery chariot with its heavenward rush that had separated him from his friend Elijah. But there is a supreme moment which every living human must face alone when the bands of mortality are stretched to the breaking point and each of us face those things who cannot be seen, only sensed by mortal eyes. Well, here is a hope and a confirmation for you and me when that moment arrives. When Elisha died, there was not an end of him, for heavenly works continued through his remains. From operation we may infer existence. By this the Lord made clear that he was still the God of Elisha. Therefore, Elisha still lived, for God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. The resurrection likewise implied that though Elisha was dead, yet by virtue of the promises God had given through him, Israel's interests, though they seemed quite sunk and lost, could revive and flourish again. We are not told the dead man tumbled so unceremoniously into the sepulcher was a righteous man, or that he received extended life due to his virtue, nor that his mourners were especially devout men, or even that they prayed for him to rise from the dead. Surely, we may draw from this that the power of the shed blood of Jesus Christ, which is meant to resurrect souls of those in a dead state of sin, can reach the most hopeless case, not because of the merit of the poor lost soul, but because he is God. Another point, Elisha was honored of God in his lifetime, in his departure, and he was also honored after his departure. God thus dispenses honor as he pleases. Recognition from God, unlike praise from men, is, in, is dependent entirely on the standard he ordains for giving it. And that recognition cannot be stolen nor devalued by jealous rivals. And last of all, it is good being near the saints and having our lot cast with theirs, both in life and in death. God's people live better lives than any other on the face of the planet, both in contentment and innocence. And since death, that grim monster, is appointed to each of us from Adam until the world shall cease to spin, it is good to be with saints as they breathe their last. Then the soft flutter of angels' wings seems to fill the air, and sorrow is mingled with comfort and peace as the weary labor of earth is ended and the bliss of eternal rest begins. Have you talked to God today? You have been listening to God's Five Minutes with Pastor Ed Wilson. Reach him by email at g-o-d-s-f-i-v-e minutes at gmail.com. Tune in next time to hear more encouraging thoughts from God's Word on God's Five Minutes with Pastor Ed Wilson.